Yep. I don't waste any time, do I? Oh, no, you don't. Not at all. All right. Okay. Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome back to Trouble uh, with Missy and Thor. What and are we, Trouble? I just, I don't know. Missy I almost forgot Thor. the. <laughs> I, almost forgot, <laughs> I almost forgot the title of our own podcast. So, um, question number one is the plant centered? Hmm. <laughs> You your yeah, one position. inch, no. like a half a millimeter. Okay. So, um, anyway, so we uh, we are busy uh, goofing off here, and we yeah. Um, yeah. If you haven't watched this before, um, this is our first time wearing red. Today is like a red, or maroon, uh, red, or a maroon red. This kind of maroon. Yeah. yeah. We decided to switch it up. We like musicians. We're so used to wearing black all the time. <laughs> we are very dark. I had a, I had a, I had a student tell me once that I was wearing black too much. She's really? like, Melissa, you need to wear other colors. And I'm like, but this is my professional color. This is what we're told to wear when we perform. <laughs> She's like, you're bringing me down, man. I know. <laughs> wear something a little brighter. Yeah. I know. So we decided to do like a more reddish kind of thing. Um, but yeah, if you haven't watched us, we do this podcast from Apollo Piano um, in Chico, which is on Mangrove. And uh, I know that if you've watched this before, I've mentioned Vince Chambers, who's the owner. And one thing that I will tell you that I haven't, I don't think I mentioned this before, um, but if you own a piano that is in need of repair, so like, you know, like if you have a key that's not working or if you've dropped a paper clip in there or you need the pedals worked on or you need repair work on a piano, um, Vince is a certified piano technician. I don't know if you know Awesome. That. Yeah. So if you have like a piano that just needs work, some, some TLC, as they say, yes. um, he, he can do that and he's really good at it and he charges very fair rates because I know some of you have a piano in there that's like not working very well. That mm -hmm. might have a key that's not working mm -hmm. or might have a key that's not even there. <laughs> <You'd be laughs> like, oh, there's a big hole in my or piano. Or you're spending a lot of time at home because of COVID and you're like, you know what? I think I'll tickle the old ivories. Yeah. So. And if the ivories can't be tickled, you need to call Vince. <laughs> <laughs> That's a weird statement. Okay. Yes. So uh, today we're talking about musical styles and genres. Yes. And, yes. And uh, we, ha I, we haven't really planned on what we're going to say yet, but um, I, I was thinking. face my microphone in yeah. the right direction. <laughs> right. We, we got the microphone figured out. So There's I going think, to yeah. be a blooper here in about. Just about microphones. Yeah. Yes, probably about microphones and yes. <clears throat> and lights falling. Are you, is your ankle okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I you had a lot of technical difficulties you, you getting this set up today. So you tripped while you were setting. Yeah, while you, you left, I had two lights fall on me, but it's okay. Well, I laughed. I wasn't laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, come on, walk it off, right? Yes. <laughs> but but uh, fortunately, Melissa is not seriously injured, and we are yeah. here and. Okay. And Thor has me, so that's good. And nobody, even though he wants to make this a one-man show, trust me, he's trying. <laughs> he's trying to make it that way. But no, no, no. I'm not trying he to. He won't you get out. that lucky. Trust me. I would never be able to do this without my uh, jolly sidekick here. So don't worry. Yeah. Sidekick. Um, okay. Anyway, so no, don't knock anything over. I won't knock anything over. So okay. anyway, we are okay. We didn't have to call nine one one. Yes. And um, we're going to talk about musical styles. So what I'm thinking of doing is just kind of mentioning something about the history but i'm not going to do a full on history because we'd be here for three weeks doing yeah and plus it's boring trust me this is going to be fun too much history with music could be boring so i'm going to mention one thing about it that's actually not boring and then missy and if is... he gets boring i'll let him know <laughs> just smack me <laughs> throw cake in my face right cake um, in your face. yeah <laughs> the, the, our certified cake flinger so. yes um, okay, so I'll, I'll mention something about music history, and then Missy is going to actually walk us through some of the um, eras of classical music, which I know might sound boring, but there's actually a really good side of that in terms of like the three different, or actually there's four different eras of classical music, and they're all very different from one another. Yes. And I think what people don't realize, you probably agree, is that they are noticeably different. So I, I don't know. I think something that is um, from the Romantic era will sound very different than something from the Baroque area. Oh era, yes, right? absolutely. And some people might even like more one more than the other. Yes. It's like it's like comparing reggae and blues music. They're very different, right? And you will learn something from this podcast. I promise you. You're probably going to yeah. learn a lot you of things. Better. So it'll be a test. <laughs> it'll be a test. <laughs> it'll be a test. Or we'll quiz you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. So should I just mention something real quick? Yes. Because go I ahead. I took very copious notes. <laughs> My, my one <laughs> post it. So, <laughs> this is this is why we are very official. So this you is where my all night I spent all night doing, uh, doing the notes, and this is how I got my PhD is on a post-it note. 
So <laughs> this is with the history of music. Um, believe it or not, uh, when people talk about the history of music, they wonder like how far back does it go? Does it go as far back as when the apes first started like wandering the jungle and they had opposable thumbs or was it later than that? So <laughs> what, I, what I found out, it's, I'm almost like half serious because it goes back so far um, in terms of like, well, when did people first start making music? Yes. Okay, because this will go into musical styles in a minute because um, there's so many throughout history. And it goes back, believe it or not, like 40,000 years ago. And and that's a long time ago, if you haven't noticed. That's, that's a lot of years. That's so, older than Thor. It's older than me. It's older than Missy, too. And <laughs> so, for, so the reason why people know this is be, because archaeologists dug up, like, artifacts and stuff. And they found flutes that were made of femurs, bones, of from bears. So they, they apparently, like, some of the people way back in the day... Um, 40,000 years ago, they they would hunt bears and they would use a femur and they would carve flutes out of the femur and they would play music on this flute made of bone. And this is just, this is from the one page of research I did. And that's where music, that's theoretically part of where music started. And after that, you have all these different genres. There was music that evolved in the Middle East where they use things like sitars and there's music that evolved in China and Japan and that area. And there's also music that started emerging around the uh, 16th, uh, 15th, to 16th century, which is the classical music, what they call Western art music or classical music, which is what Missy's going to discuss. Yes. And then we can talk about like um, how classical music was sort of a, pre a springboard into mm -hmm. the other genres like jazz and, and uh, modern day rock and roll or like the Beatles. And because all those groups like that you get into when you get into the 50s, 60s, 70s and beyond, um, all of that acted on that foundation of Western art music that she's going to talk about. So yeah. tell us about classical music. <laughs> well, there's, there's a few musical eras right before that Baroque period. One of them is the medieval and one is the Renaissance. And I think uh, those are pretty self-explanatory. One started like 1150 and the other one started in around 1400s and then the 1600s. And then the Baroque era started right after that. Um, so uh, this is, this is uh, something I've discovered, you know, and teaching piano in that. I was um, a former member of the National Music Teachers Guild. And um, it's it was a really good experience. Um, I was able to, and I still do this with my students when I teach, but it's it, when, when we're getting together like a, a, a group of music to perform or to learn, just to learn, we pick a song from each classical era. So the Baroque, the classical, the romantic, and the contemporary. And usually students will, um, they'll click from one with one era or the other. So if a student is really good in math, they'll usually do really well in the Baroque era. And if they're really good in English and, and strive in English, they're going to do well in the um, either the classical or the romantic era, you take a mathematician and have him play Chopin. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so with ma as mathematician, do you mean like mathematicians would be good at playing Chopin? Is that, I, uh, I'm saying they would probably, it would not be their cup of tea. They okay. would, they would probably not. Interesting. Do, I, it, it, they, they could play it, but it wouldn't be there. It wouldn't, that wouldn't, they would probably favor the Baroque era over the Romantic era. Okay. Is that because the Baroque era has music that's more like structured and technical and. Uh, yeah, I believe yeah. so. Yeah. yeah. But it's interesting. If you are a music teacher, um, I highly <clears throat> recommend asking your students uh, what their favorite subject is in school. And oh. you'll usually it's, it's interesting, but um, that's something I learned early on, but, but going back to the Baroque era, we have, um, we have a uh, classical composer such as Handel and Bach. Mm -hmm. And um, do you know what Bach's inventions were originally um, meant for? <clears throat> Was it for um, the church services? Well, he uses, he well, he used them as exercises for his students. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't know that partially. I didn't know that his inventions. So when you say inventions, you're talking about that specific type, those types of songs. Those types so, of yeah. songs. Yeah. 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 And so I don't know. I, it would probably be a very um, challenging. It would be challenging to be a 
jukebox student, wouldn't you say? I would say, student? well, I would Could say it'd be so. fun though. I mean, it, I would like it. Well, can you imagine? I mean, being a student of somebody that's like world famous is like, oh my gosh, do should I call you Johan or Mr. Bach? Or what? <laughs> um, that's an interesting scenario. Though. I wonder what yeah. his students were like if they were like intimidated, or maybe he was like a very patient teacher. Well, you would have to be just to yeah. be patient to just write that music. You'd have to have yeah. some amount of patience. Um, yeah. so, so everybody, you know, who works with me outside of, of my piano studio, and even in my piano studio, but this is outside, they say, you're so patient. I think in order oh, to, good. to be a classical, you're all not with me. Well, no, me. I mean, it, no, 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 <laughs> no. Not with you specifically. Seriously. It's, it's a good compliment to a teacher because being a teacher takes a lot of patience. It does. It you're does. You're working with kids who are eight, nine, ten years old. and it, you know. Yeah. And I tell them, well, in order to, you know, become a fairly decent classical musician, mm -hmm. you have to have a certain amount of discipline. You also have yeah. to be, uh, you have to be patient. Yeah. Yeah, you do. As, as a student, you mean also? Yeah, as yeah. a student. I yes. agree. And and one of the things I've noticed is that you've probably seen this too, because mm -hmm. you have kids, may, same age group. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll just throw this out there to anybody watching, because um, we have 45 subscribers now, right? <laughs> Maybe 46, I don't know. Yes. But um, uh, I've noticed that with some of my students, one of the traits that they seem to already have when they first start is they just want to be able to play the darn song and they want to yes. be able to play it pretty quickly. Yes. And sometimes it doesn't work that way right away, especially if you're a beginner. You have to work on the right hand first and spend a few weeks just developing your right hand. And then you spend a few weeks doing the left hand and then you try hands together. Mm -hmm. And when you try the hands together for the first time, a lot of times the song just falls apart because now your brain's on overload. Exactly. And I'm sure you've had that same experience. So yes. I, I tell my students the same thing. Like sometimes you have to have a little bit of patience, but I promise it will pay off because then when you are able to do it, then you'll be like showing it off to your friends. You'll be like, mom, look what I can do. And and yep. you're going to be in, in that stage where now you can play both hands together. And it's like learn, it's like being able to ride ride a bike for the first time without the training wheels. You can now you can do it. You can just ride. And exactly. So I mean, growing up, I always thrived with like Mozart and Beethoven. Um, English was always my strong subject in school. Um, but as I got older, and I don't know if it's because my brain was, I don't know more developed i don't know oh. so you were the straight eight <laughs> top of your class student when you were younger or? sometimes oh. um but i really i really um i really became a fan of baroque um towards the end like mm. when i was a senior in high school yeah. i remember uh playing handel's messiah for my senior recital and you said math is a so is math one of your strong suits? Well, it, it wasn't always my strong suits. I became okay. much better as I got um, older, but uh, mm. but I but I became more um, connected with Baroque music as I got older. Okay. And now, like I love Bach, I love Handel, and mm -hmm. I can't tell you when I was uh, you know in junior high, I was like, my teacher had to make me play those guys oh really oh those so baroque in junior guys. high you didn't like them no oh, i didn't i was like baroque i mean i was like mozart beethoven and the baroque era was like not my forte at all yeah it's so. interesting that you developed because i actually mentioned this in this ad i put on facebook <laughs> <laughs> about our fake our fake degrees that we have after our names. <laughs> yeah um, but anyway i mentioned this like it seems like your taste evolved a little bit as you got older it did it yeah. did and i think that happens sometimes so. yes I, it's amazing yeah. how that works so yeah, yeah. wow that, that's really insightful what else do you have other um other well yeah uh you know going on the classical romantic and contemporary so you know what i have all my students play um a, a song from each composer from each um from each musical era. So we had the Baroque, which is 1600 to 1750. Classical, which is 1750 to 1850. Romantic is from 1820 to 1900. And contemporary modern is 1900 to present. I think contemporary is pretty much across the board. Yeah. I don't think that discriminates against anybody. I think mm -hmm. you could get pretty much, because it, it, I think with contemporary, all those other musical eras kind of evolve in that specific yeah. modern or contemporary um, era. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And <clears throat> so uh, I, I've thought about this too, because that, you know, a lot of people these days um, that listen to certain kinds of contemporary music, yes. um, 
they also obviously you can sub categorize it right oh yeah yeah um, because they even have what are called musical uh what do you call it um when you combine styles uh yeah fusions no yeah something like, like hybrid that. musical hybrid yes so like a jazz blues hybrid or you know they might do like a I don't know, I'm trying to. I mean, it's like, so tricky. Like you know, yeah. like even like with um, Alicia Keys, mm -hmm. uh, certain you'll you'll find like oh like oh for Elise, so like they'll throw in some yeah. uh, classical music in their hip hop. But their hip hop artists are known for taking someone like you know really well known classical pieces and like mm -hmm. throwing them probably and maybe mixing it in with part their of, beats. yeah part yeah, of their yeah. intro and in and actually music. like here's a good example. Um, the Moody Blues. Now, mm -hmm. I'm believe it or not, I'm not a history expert, but the Moody Blues was a band that was when the 70s. Mm -hmm. Are Something they from the like 70s? That. Yeah. If I'm wrong, you're welcome to type it, and then you can uh, criticize me for being wrong. <laughs> but <laughs> so I think they were from the 70s. I could be wrong. Uh, maybe 60s. I think 70s. The Moody Blues. They had um, this 70s style kind of rock music, sort of progressive style a little bit, but they mixed in uh, classical music with it. Or classical style music that sounded very much like i mean they used a, a full orchestra with their rock music and blended it so things like that so you have these hybrids but yeah the the contemporary period is so you said uh oh yeah from 1910 oh, from 1900 to 1900 present, yeah. yeah so 1900 to present is was was called contemporary 1910 music. give or take 10 give years. or take yeah <laughs> in that 1905 you know there's no exact time when it starts obviously yeah and there's some overlaps with the ever, other eras too. exactly but, but 1900 onwards you're talking about contemporary music so you can anything you listen to nowadays that's older than 1900s can technically be grouped in that category but you obviously have subgroups you know um mm -hmm. and 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 the most cl the closest so the modern music that I think is the closest to the classical style would probably be something like some of the soundtrack composers, like John Williams, mm -hmm. who composed the soundtracks to Star Wars and Jurassic Park. And mm -hmm. he used the orchestra with the violins and the brass and the woodwinds. That's why it sounds very much like the Romantic era. Oh, bit, yeah, you know? yeah. So, yeah, this is it's very interesting. Yes. See, I told you it wasn't boring. Right? I know. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, we could probably talk about this particular topic I think we should do a part two. For like, really? I, I like really about do. movies? We could go into part two. I could go on. Yeah. This. Unless, it's, you, it's, unless it's, you object. It, I mean, it's a lot of fun. I remember like, um, for example, and I, I could just kind of go on this a little bit because it's it's kind of fun to talk about. Um, I had two daughters and one uh, played the piano and the guitar and the other one played the violin. And I remember my daughter's teacher had a movie theme one year. For the recital and so my daughter decided to play um well there was i don't know how we we're able to because there was oh there was also a patriotic theme for one of the recitals so for the patriotic theme my daughter played the uh theme song to the patriot oh. on the violin <clears throat> which was really pretty and then for yeah. the music theme she played uh the theme song to legends of the fall oh wow That's and cool. of course yeah. mom can you accompany me <laughs> Okay, so that's yeah, that's yeah. what we did, but it was a they're both you, very beautiful pieces. And did you accompany her? Yes, wow. I did. So you guys have like worked yeah, together. That's really cool. Yeah, it was a lot yeah. of fun. So yeah. yeah, but um getting back to that too, you know, there's there's some like Thor was talking about, there's some you'll you'll hear that there's some type of like classical styles in those musical mm -hmm. uh theme songs. Yeah which is really cool. Yeah, yeah. well, and especially in, in movie soundtracks, because mm -hmm. what you'll notice about, about movie soundtracks is a lot of them <clears throat> have uh, very emotional sounding, like violins, strings, cellos, yeah. very rich, you know, especially like the suspense movies. Yes. Um, like the movie uh, Inception has, I think Hans Zimmer was the composer mm -hmm. who did the soundtrack. I might be yes. wrong again. Yes. But um, they use full orchestras, or if they don't, they mm -hmm. use a very realistic computer mm -hmm. program that simulates orchestras or both. Yes. Um, so John Williams, Hans Zimmer, um, who's another one? Uh, Danny Elfman is another one. Mm -hmm. These are these are modern day composers that compose music for orchestras that sound very similar to what you might find in the Romantic era. Not the same, yeah. but similar because it's very dramatic. And yeah. So where do you think they got that style? So it's all historical. It stems from those earlier eras. Absolutely. Because yeah. I am um, one year in 2016, I performed with the Orville Community Chorus and Band and we 
which you know uh uh, Sir April Taylor, yeah. who we had as our guest speaker last week, mm -hmm. uh, she is now the director of that um, Orville Community Chorus and Band. But getting back to that, I was their featured pianist back in 2016, and we performed a song called The Seal Lullaby. And it was a song that was like almost a Disney song. I guess it wow, didn't quite really? the movie didn't it was like pitched to Disney, but they didn't <clears throat> they didn't pick it up. Yeah. Anyways, well, it was a really, really fun piece. And it kind of re it was like a movie theme song. And then mm -hmm. it did have very like a very strong romantic style to it, which was really pretty and, and fun to play on the piano. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I and I have that recording. It's really cool on my thumb. But um, yeah, right it's a lot of fun. Yeah, cool. that's I when like I that. played in front of like a bunch of people and yeah, I remember you mentioned I wore a that. pretty, pretty red dress and yeah, everybody stood up you, you and clapped gotta, after I played. It exactly. was a lot of fun. Standing ovation, wow. <laughs> and I got to play one of Vince's hybrids piano, which was very awesome. It was like a brand new hybrid piano. Yeah. Oh, was it the, do you know which one it was? I have no idea. Um, I have I'll one. I'll go back and look. <laughs> I, have, I have one at home. Yeah. Her name's Zoe. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I'm not going to get into the, the names of my instruments, but... Um, oh goodness! So so yeah, but hybrid. If you it's don't know, another she, podcast. it's another podcast. So if you don't know what she's um, talking about, hybrid pianos is, is a thing. It, um, it is. They're 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 less they're 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 a little bit less expensive than the real pianos. And what they are basically is it looks like an actual piano. It just looks like an upright piano. Yeah, but it's more like um, a keyboard. It, yeah, and it you, simulates. And you, but more it, like an acoustic piano. That's it really sounds almost exactly like a real piano. It's amazing. And yes. they cost, I know this sounds like a lot of money, but they cost only about $10,000 as opposed to real pianos that might cost more, mm -hmm. like 20000 And that was the thing. We needed something that was going to fit on the stage with all the other band members. And mm -hmm. initially, being, me being the prima donna that I was, I told the director, well, let's just get rid of some of the musicians so we could fit a grand on the piano. He said, and he looked at me, I was just said, I'm kidding. <laughs> but um, that's when um, I called Vince up and he was able to um, bring up one of the, the hybrids. It was amazing. It was like brand new. Um, but anyways, upright, we were able to fit it on the stage and um, it sounded so well with the other instruments. Yeah. It blended so well. I could not believe it. They, uh, they sound really good. I used one for one of my recitals and some of the students didn't even realize it wasn't a real piano. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, it's, it's. What do you mean? It's they plugged sound in. That Why is good. it plugged in? Yeah. They sound that it good. It sounds pretty amazing. It's, it's yes. pretty amazing what they can do with the technology. Totally. Yeah. Um, so if you have to get that in between, that's a yeah. really good um, option. It's a good starter sure. instrument. Yeah. And then you got to get the real thing because there's nothing like the real thing. Oh, yeah. There really isn't. There isn't. Um, so okay. what time are we running? 7.54, but we okay. we kind of we kind of rambled for five minutes. Okay. <laughs> you want to go, go to 8 or 5? We ramble. Um, joking, so joking anyways, um, so yeah, when when I, I have my students, I really like to have like them play more like a well-rounded um, program. Yeah. Um, reason being, I tell my students this too. If you could play classical music, you could play anything. Mm -hmm. And so I really make that a strong point because – in order for them to build those musical skills, they they have to have a good foundation. And Baroque era, if you look at the this as you go along, you'll see. But more in like Baroque era, there's a lot of scales. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, a lot of patterns. A lot of patterns. Mm -hmm. So um, with my students, you know, I always have them, and this is the way I teach. And I don't know how other teachers teach out there, but normally, if there's like scales, cadences, and arpeggios, let's say the song is in the key of D minor. Well, I have them warm up on the um, D minor scale mm -hmm. and with the scales, arpeggios, and the cadences yeah. in the key of D minor, then play the song. Mm -hmm. And it's it's kind of interesting because it kind of reinforces that key signature mm -hmm. and that when the students play the song, they're less likely to um, miss the uh, the notes that are in that scale because they know, oh, well, in the key of D minor, you know, I have a B yeah. flat or whatever it yeah. is. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Yes. And, and I like what you said about um, <clears throat> classical music being a foundation because mm -hmm. obviously there's so many different types of music out there. There's You have the 70s and 80s classic. Well, the 80s was just great. That's, oh. just, that's just fun. Oh, they were who doesn't fun. Love, who doesn't love 80s music? You know. Oh, goodness. But you have the 80s music. You have the, the 70s classic rock. You have the, the 50s and 60s, like Beatles and all that other stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you have the jazz, which is a very admirable thing if you can play that because that's really hard to learn. 
Yes, it you is. have the the blues, which I love. Um, you have all these different styles. Like is reggae. there anything you don't like, Thor? There's, there's only two types of music that I don't listen to, and it doesn't mean that that style of music is worse. Or yeah, in, you'll just kind of keep that to yourself. No, no, no. It's okay. I don't mind mentioning this because this actually goes in. Well, we know Yanni is not in that category. <laughs> That's not a style. It's just a guy. <laughs> just a guy. People think he's like my secret admirer or no, I just told Thor to grow his hair out. <laughs> Look like him. Anyway. I'm not growing a goofy no, mustache. Not happening. Yeah, it's not happening. Okay. Um, what was I saying? <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about Oh, what kind of music I don't listen to. Yeah. So so here's the here's kind of my view on musical styles. Uh I think that they they are all um what's the word? Uh Equal. Equal. Yeah. In terms of like uh, merit. So there's, I don't think there's any such, you know, I don't think there's any one style that's better than the, than the other. Mm -hmm. Although I do very much, very adamantly agree with, with Missy when she says that um, if you can learn to play classical music, you can learn to play most other genres. Most of them. Yes. I think because it, it, it builds a really good foundation mm -hmm. because you're talking about three or 400 years or more of history mm -hmm. of, of different evolving musical styles mm -hmm. you learn that stuff you can play rock you can play reggae you can play mm -hmm. blues um the electronic weird progressive stuff that yes. they have now <laughs> you just, and, and not only that too like <clears throat> if let's just say you want to be in a band mm -hmm. or you want to play in a musical ensemble group yeah and um you know your scales and your cadences and arpeggios and your you know seven five seven chords and all that fancy stuff um dominant seven chords you're going to be able to sit down with a lead sheet yeah if you don't know what that is that's like a a, a sheet with like chord names on it mm -hmm. and you're going to be able to follow along with that music very easily like that. <clears throat> and not yeah. only that you're going to be able to improvise and and do fills and and yeah. make it sound good because you have that that background in uh, mm -hmm. classical music and that, yeah. all that stuff, you know, especially when you go into more richer things like, yeah. oh, it, I don't it, even get me started on Rachmaninoff. Oh, Love that favorite. guy. Oh, my oh. God. You had to mention him. And we have you know, five more minutes. I know. Left. But Keep yeah, no, going. I, I, I agree. And it, mm -hmm. it will just it will re really empower you. So as an example, like I've been in a couple of bands. I played the keys in a couple of bands. We weren't famous, but there was one where we played like two gigs. He had big hair at one time. I did not know that's not true. <laughs> I had a little bit of a I had a little bit of long hair when I was sixteen, like down here, maybe. A mullet? Not really. He has <laughs> a... I did not have a mullet. Okay, sorry. No, no. I, off the well, topic. Maybe kind of like on People the people are trying to learn here. Let's keep on going. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. um, so uh uh now I forgot again what I was gonna say. You were in a couple bands. Oh yeah, I was in a couple bands. You played the keys. I played the keys. And one of them, we played four shows and two of them were at barbecue. So it doesn't really count as like, <laughs> like a valid, legitimate band. But what I can tell you, the reason bringing this up, there's a reason. And that is that when, when they um, decided to audition me, they were like, oh, you play the keyboard, huh? Well, let's see, you know, because these were like these cocky musicians, one with like a guitarist and there was a drummer and a singer. The singer was really bad, but um they they were they were <laughs> generally they were generally good musicians and they were like okay thor let's see what you can do and i'd been studying music since i was eight so for me it was like that's it <laughs> they, they gave me a lead sheet and i was like i played along on the first try without messing up because i could read the chords i knew what they were g minor a minor okay oh there's a seventh well that's fancy so i yes. you know so i played as they were playing and they're like <gasps> How did you know what to play? How do you play so well? And I'm not trying to sound braggy, but it's because I had studied and learned classical music. I knew what the chords were. I knew what, the, what a lead mm -hmm. sheet was. Mm -hmm. And I was able to follow along. And mm -hmm. they accepted me like that. And yes. the same is true with the other band. And again, this isn't me going like, oh, look what I can do. I'm better mm -hmm. than everybody else. If you study, you know, the, the core subjects when it, when it comes to like the classics and learning, you know, the romantic era, Baroque era, the classical era, um, all that stuff. And then a little bit of the modern stuff too. So learn to play a song by Alicia Keys. It will help you, you know, you will actually be able to reach beyond your comfort zone mm -hmm. and appreciate modern styles as well. Mm -hmm. um, I have students right now that are learning soundtracks to video games. That's modern. Yes. Know? Oh, I just looked one up for my student the other day. Um, it mm -hmm. was the Super Mario theme song. 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that one <laughs> that's is really, really popular, that one's super actually. cute. I'm like, oh my yeah. gosh, I gotta go home and play this on the piano. Yeah. But anyways. Yeah. So so you know, it's good to study all the different genres, all the different eras, yes. uh, including the classical and mm -hmm. the modern stuff too. And the mm -hmm. modern stuff, pick something you like. Exactly. And I ask my students, like, okay, I'm gonna make you I'm gonna force you to play the Baroque and the and all that other boring stuff. Yes. And then you could pick a song that you want to learn. Exactly. And they're like they get so excited and some of them, um, one of them, I have a kid who's 10. She wanted to learn um, the soundtrack to Jurassic Park. On oh, the yeah, that one's so pretty. And I love that one. Yes. So I kind of, you know what I did? Because she was like, I I was like, well, I don't know if you're ready for it. It's pretty tough. And she's mm -hmm. like, please, you know, she was like, yeah. baby. So I surprised her. I, I showed up to the lesson. Um, I go to their parents' house. Mm -hmm. where they're in live book. So mm -hmm. I go over there. And I surprised her and I got out the sheet music and I was like, oh, what's this? And she was like, oh, my God. <laughs> and she started she started running around the house and she started squeaking. She was like, <laughs> you know, she's like, mommy, I got the Jurassic Park. In it. And she was so excited. So that's the kind of thing I like to see, because you want to have some freedom of what you choose as far as your style. Mm -hmm. And you want to give your students a little bit of freedom, give them yes. like a treat. Right. Yes. Let them choose if, you know. So if that's kind of, if you can. Yeah. yeah. And, and see, that's the thing too. When we get into that, learning all these foundations, what happens is, is one day you'll be able to sit down with Thor in his music studio and be able to write a song. And that's which, true. Which I will do one day. I know it will happen. We tried. Well, <laughs> you took two we'll lessons to, from me. Yeah. We'll have to do that again. I'm still waiting for lesson number three. So. I know it's going to happen. Yeah, but, I, I do teach composition. So that's another. Service. Yeah. And that's that's what I want to get into, because as Thor was talking about, like sitting down with this band and playing those chords, that yeah. also runs into writing your own music yeah. and it's those yeah. chord structures and all that. I yeah. mean, and the thing is, like after a while, when you've played um, classical music for so long, it doesn't you're not even thinking about it. like when I was telling Thor I'm like I don't even think about it I just play it yeah you know you play it and say it and, and I've seen you do that too yeah yeah and it's so and this is a very basic thing and then I think we gotta wrap yeah. up but yeah. um so like uh, as you know when you <laughs> even if you don't read music I'm sure you know this mm -hmm. th there are lines and on the lines <laughs> are little dots <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I know she's laughing because there's an inside joke behind this but on the lines are little dots and the dots represent the notes so when you know, when you understand classical music enough and you understand theory and key signatures and all that stuff, mm -hmm. you almost don't have to even read every dot that's on the page because you can just look at what the key signature is yes. and you're like, okay, the key signature is in E major. I already know there's four sharps in E major. So you don't have to look at every note and like, oh, is that a G sharp or G natural? You just know because yes. you've been studying this for so long. Exactly. It's kind of like when you're reading regular words, like when you're reading a book. You don't look at every single letter in every word, right? You just look the, at the word as chunks. Mm -hmm. You look at the word computer, you know, like C-O-M-P. You just read it like that. It just comes to you as a picture in your head. Mm -hmm. The same is true when you're reading music and definitely when you read music because you're pretty darn good at it. Oh, thank you. Um, which is, I say in all seriousness, because I've seen her. She, I gave her um, the sheet music for Pirates of the Caribbean, the the piano version, Yeah. which is really hard. It's 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 the It's the advanced version is who the advanced it? who who's, who's uh, that? jared radnick yeah he, who's yeah. amazing by the way yeah and this is a very difficult piece to play on the piano <laughs> and so you know what i did i was like well because she was my student at one point i don't know if we, <laughs> we mentioned that and and i was like well since you're this good let's see if you can do this and i was like good luck and she was like <laughs> and she like played it almost flawlessly and i'm like I should be taking lessons from you. What are you doing here with me? So, we all have our strengths. We all have our strengths. And our weaknesses. Yeah. But um, yeah, so I you know that that's that's the thing. We're we're gonna have to like really um I think next week we could kind of tie into um these musical eras, but maybe we'll go into more music composition. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, oh, yeah. that's good. To so kind of tie into yeah. that. So I think okay. that'd be good. Yeah. Cool. So music comp composition next week. Yes. That's a absolutely. good, good topic. It's a good teaser, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Anything else? Okay. I think that's it. Um, please subscribe. Mm -hmm. Thank you for listening and, and tuning in to us. And yeah, uh, we really appreciate it. Like um, someone had mentioned to me earlier this week that they, that this was more like a music tutorial. And I, I really oh. agree with that. I mean, if you're learning from these videos, that's that's kind of our intent. We really yeah. want you to um, 
walk away with um, some musical knowledge yeah. um, from this podcast. So. Or even just inspiration and encouragement, yeah. you know. Absolutely. Because uh, music is not, it doesn't necessarily have to be a career for you. Although if you do, like my mm -hmm. hat's off to you because that's what I'm doing. Yeah. And I gave up um, teaching seventh grade full time to do it. <laughs> but, um, but it could also just be something that you pursue on your own time in your free time and for your enjoyment. And it, it will really make your life better, especially in times when you have to be at home a lot because of what's going on. Um, exactly. So it's just like it's like pursuing any other art, whether it's painting or sculpture. Pursuing music really um, will not only make your life more enjoyable, but you will your brain will grow, mm -hmm. and you'll find yourself smarter and being able to remember things. You'd be like, I know exactly. And when you read books, you'll read faster. I don't know if you, mm -hmm. you've noticed that, but mm -hmm. your brain becomes sharper, and it, it's it's just so much fun. And then you get that social aspect of playing instruments with other people. So exactly. So, yeah. so anyways, and then if you would like to go back to our uh, last week's podcast, we talked about a music therapy and what mm -hmm. that is. So I highly encourage you guys to go back and watch our other videos because there's yeah. something special in every single one. Yeah, yeah. There are, and a lot of other goof ups in the other one, other, every other one. Yes. And then <laughs> so. all of a sudden you'll get all our inside jokes. Yeah, yeah. But anyways, okay. well, right. thank you for thank joining you so us. Mm -hmm. See you next Thursday at 730. Am I turning it off? Yes. <laughs>